Boy, all that shooting and all that to you didn't. Boy, you ain't talking about any car you get, I could get. Any house you got, I could get. I got the same money. What you talking about? What it is, guys? It's your boy Tyrone Couple, and today we're here with this late-breaking information and news report about how Meek Mill diddled himself, a uh, black bald, same thing, really, himself. Board 11. Meek Mill, a man who been through a lot in the music industry, but lately he been losing the people. I'm talking about anytime you see a post about Meek Mill, he always getting clowned or made fun of. A prime example of this was him and Michael Rubin. Michael Rubin had this man Meek Mill jumping up and down like he was a bunny rabbit on camera. Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. And when I say the internet was just trolling Meek, it was bad. He was getting hit with all kind of allegations. Specifically, they was calling Meek a little fruit. See, when all of this went down, it was early this year, when the whole Diddy lawsuit was going on. And if you don't know, Meek and Diddy had been real close over the years. And Meek was spoken on specifically in the Diddy lawsuit that came out of February. Diddy male ex-producer was suing Diddy for essay. NBC News reports that Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a producer and videographer, fought a lot. $100 million, he got paid too. Diddy did that. Lawsuit against Diddy in federal court. Rodney Jones listed Diddy, his son Justin Combs, UMG CEO, Combs chief of staff, ex Motown record CEO as defendants in the suit. Rod said that for years he traveled with Diddy. He was recording his music videos, making beats, just basically trying to get his money. But it ain't turning out like that. He said that allegedly he was essayed by Diddy many times during that time period. And in this same lawsuit, Meek Mill was spoke on. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in rapper five that's redacted look five he's a philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki minaj yo meek we were playing around with that michael rubin but if you don't if you've been tweeting about every been tweeting about everything on planet earth if you don't get a twitter rant saying you about to get a little rod you about to shoot up his block blow his mama's house up this is saying that you and diddy were fornicating what the f me? Like I can't even imagine such debauchery and such free happening to a gangster rapper like me. Imagine after a freak off session with allegedly Meek and mother Diddy, and now Diddy's over here braided uh, Meek's hair. Like, come on, bro. No, he's a Philly rapper who did not nah, no way. Nah, it's no way, bro. You see, people was already feeling how they did about Freaky Meek before this lawsuit came out. And for him to get accused of this, on top of everything he had already been going through over the years, was a recipe for disaster. In a disaster, it was. The entire world was calling Meek Mill gay, and he couldn't take it no more. He got right on Twitter, snapping on everybody. Meek got on Twitter and said, they ain't gonna play no games with me. They trying to do damage control. The same thing they almost tricked y'all with with Lil Baby. I'm from Philly. I don't do no coke. I don't do no freak molly. Nobody would ever even offer me coke because I'm that head. No man would ever approach me about no gay activity in the whole place. Don't get it flipped. Woke up seeing this on every blog like they know how I'm coming. LOL. You see, what did he get arrested? Of oh, they know how he coming. Oh. A few days ago, who knows what some of these witnesses finna come out on this stand and say. And while I was editing this, Meek got on Twitter and responded to it. He said, I will personally give you a million dollars if these stories add up in anything weird beyond trench slash hood level. It's two things we can't do in the trenches. There's no way y'all know what type of man I am. They ain't gonna promote a song at the end of this. That wasn't the only thing Meek said. Though. He also got on Twitter and said, I want to hire an investigator team of 100K cash to find out every specific detail involving Meek Mill name to the Diddy case. I also want them to look at who is powering the media involving Meek with anything to do with Buddy. Something not right. He said, the streets know what's up with me and that's not the case. We talking about business side. Somebody powering these bad campaigns with Meek Mill. Again, I got 100K for a thorough investigation of who's powering and how exactly my name is connected to this. It would be crazy if Meat Mill got dropped in court and it would just blow everything up because ever since Diddy got arrested, you done seen the memes. Every time you get on Twitter, you get on IG, you see somebody making a meme about Meat Mill and Diddy. It's getting bad for me, but we just gotta let it unfold. We gotta see what really come of this Diddy case. But about them tweets, they wasn't just about Diddy. He also started coming at academics because academics started to involve himself in the situation. He seen the news about Meek Mill, so he reported on it. He did what he do. Meek said, "Aka alcoholic with no life talking to kids on a computer. Normal kids watch Kai, Aiden, Wallow, Gilly. You a sick old black man with no life achievements trying to destroy black men because you envious as me. He said, the way our niggas coming and sit now, I can't wait to meet academics. And so after he tweeted about academics, you know what academics do. Act like the number one troll in hip hop. After Meek sent these tweets out, 
Act responded with his own tweets, and he got on Twitter snapping on me. All that trolling and bunny hopping killer energy by Meat Mill. His EP did a grand total of 368,000 streams first day on Spotify. It's roughly 3,500 streams that equals one album. Act said that's 105 albums sold via streaming on Spotify day one. Act later on wanted a more detail about the situation. He said when Meek seen that clipping him on stream, finding out about what happened, Meek thought the whole thing was cap. He thought Act made it up, or it was AI generated or something. So he just started snapping on dude. But not only was he just talking shit, he was threatening the academics over these Twitter words. So really think about it. He was that mad over at reading the lawsuit that was put into the federal court. This was an actual lawsuit with Semitic documents, and Meek did all that because he thought it was fake. And y'all should have knew it was going to happen. Act got on stream trolling once again. And for some context on this, Meek Mill and the Philly governor got some ties together, right? They worked together from time to time. Meek be helping with the prison system in Philly. And sometime last year, Meek had joined the government with signing the probation reform and the clean slate legislation. And what's really messed up about Meek's situation is people ain't making fun of Meek for being zesty. They making fun of Meek for being zesty and the bottom. So just know that Meek and the Philly governor actually be together and he was the same nigga that was online threatening to kill this blogger over some tweets. I understand that you're over here now trying to play victim saying that this guy wants me dead or in jail, but you tweeted out your damn self, sir. You're willing to die. But I guess what you're trying to say now is all satire. That's not going to stop us from calling the governor. We're going to call him tomorrow. Okay, we're going to have a hotline going on. I'm going to put it on my story. Make sure everybody call that. Okay, we're going to call your governor you, while you tweet out one side of your mouth about how you will spin blocks, got switches, got Dracos, will kill n pull up to house, piss on their steps. You got a million dollars to wipe people's families off the map. You cannot be in the same breath. Then look in the other way, in the other side of your mouth, saying how much the prison system is unfair because a nigga who does A deserves to be in jail. But you ain't the guy who do a you just keep saying it so you know what we're gonna do just like how you told the governor that i'm responsible for murders we're gonna give you the choice you either stop doing that we're gonna make sure you stop like it's over for that okay stop tweet like a killer or you could tweet like a killer and say his jokes but you're not gonna be sitting next to the governor you're gonna pick one then we're giving you an ultimatum you can't you can't be a activist in the daytime and a goddamn villain in the nighttime. What you think this is, nigga? Gotham City? No, nigga. You gotta pick a goddamn side. Are you a killer or are you an activist? That is the question I will continue to ask you. And I'm gonna ask the mayor. Michael Rubin is a private businessman at this point. I don't have nothing to ask him. They don't care as long as you make their them their their iced coffees and their lat lattes and you know what I mean. You fix them their drinks and bunny hop all over the place like a good boy. We saw you even bunny hopping on the under radar freestyle. It's okay. Of course he's gonna like you. Maybe you're giving him Robert Kraft the rugged tug he used to get in those spots. We got no problem with you and the couple white billionaires you got going on, right? But you know who we do got a problem with? Anytime you stand next to an elected official, law enforcement, or anybody else, and you try to act like you're the epitome of what injustice on a prison reform level looks like. You went to jail for popping a wheelie boy. Stop it, okay? You're acting like you didn't have Rock Nation show up to court every single time. They wrote they wrote that you damn near had the fbi investigate your goddamn judge because you were crying saying it was unfair and this brings us back to what i said at the start of the video meek and michael rubin remember meek mill was bunny hopping up and down a while before these allegations hit him and that video resurfacing just made everything 10 times worse it was getting so bad for me that Michael Rubin came out defending Meek saying that Meek ain't have a single gay bone in his body and that everyone else was just doing too much. Okay. But I want to get this out there. Uh, Meek, I know that guy really, really well. Everyone going around trying to say, and by the way, if he was gay, who cares? There's not a gay bone in his body. You guys know him. Like, I know mm -hmm. him. I've been around him more than anybody. People are just like, the internet, friend, one of my best friends said to me, I think Meek's gay now. I'm like, why? Because I've read it 10,000 times. There's not a gay bone in that guy's body. So it's like, why do people want to bring somebody down? Why do people want to hate on somebody? Why does someone go lie on somebody? And by talk about the bunny hops. Okay, <laughs> you're talking about the most unathletic person in planet Earth is Michael Rubin. I pride myself on that. And why do I, I by the way, why do I put the funny videos out making fun of myself? Because I want people to know, you know, you could suck at sports and be the person who's picked last all the time. You can be the person that was terrible at school. Remember, I barely graduated high school. 
and then you can work your ass, ass off and be great in business. So I'm trying to show people do what you're great at and excel in that. Right. But you see, Meek getting clowned by the industry go back years. People always treated Meek Mill like a joke for some reason. Like back in 2022 when Kanye was speaking on Meek, I'm not even lying when I say this. Kanye dead ass laughed at the thought of Meek Mill name even being brought up. I I go and I put White Lives Matter on a t-shirt. And they're like, well, we can't go. Oh, you know what? Let's go get celebrities. Let's go get, let's go get Puff Daddy. Let's get Dave Chappelle. Let's go get Meek Mills. What made somebody think Meek Mills could say something to me? What made me? No, this is the funniest thing of, of everything. <laughs> Yo, man, I'm about to start crying laughing, man. Somebody thought Meek Mills. <laughs> sorry, no, I'm sorry. Meek's a gangster. I'm get to my Meek's joke. a gangster, gang. <laughs> Meek is a somebody gangster, thought, man. Somebody said, oh, Meek. No, I'm literally in tears. Because <laughs> <I'm> like, Meek. <laughs> Meek gonna piss okay, him off. <laughs> Meek gonna talk some shit to him. <laughs> For context on this, Basically, Kanye was just doing Kanye shit. For whatever reason, he steps out the house in a White Lives Matter shirt. And of course, it's gonna go viral. You see the controversy with that. And the whole industry started coming at Ye. And the person we gonna focus on right now is Boosie. Boosie got on Twitter speaking on Ye and said, Kanye West, after all we've been through as a race, you put this disrespectful shirt on. You give no else about how many blacks have died and suffered to the hands of white men. You say that Bush don't like black people, really? And a couple days later, Ye got on Twitter and responded to Boosie. He said, speak to me, you little nerd ass dude. Come or smack me or shoot me. And this was me, Mill coming to the picture. See, he seen the White Lives Matter shirt. And he seen everything that Ye was doing. Meek got on IG and wrote a whole thank piece just talking about what Kanye did. Meek said, I used to listen to Ye every night in jail for motivation on God and came home and watched the my name and brand like nothing. I ain't say nothing, but I been knew you was on that nerd trying to talk the street. You just said it to Boosie. It hurts my soul to even know some of y'all that's crazy and lame. I don't need no verses from no. Cause I've been hot since 13. Justin LaBoy, don't invite me to none of them weird ass parties with bro. I go off person, not fame or money. Speaking from a nigga that's been buying support for Ye since he came out. But what you been doing for fame driving you crazy. Look how hard you came at me. No, I'm vocal and it's like you hate your own people. You ain't even post that Vory album even after he did all that work for you. He look up to you. You made sure you said Jack Harlow was the hottest shit in Kentucky. Overlook, EST. And voice. See, the thing with these two getting into it, it's not really a surprise because they actually had problems with each other long before this even went down. See, back in 2020, Meek and Kanye problems kind of started to get deep. Remember what I said, Meek Mill do a lot for the prison system and someone else who happened to do the same thing was Kim K, Kanye wife at the time. And it makes sense that these two would eventually get intertwined with each other. I mean, they both trying to work toward the prison system. And so eventually it do happen. Meek and Kim have a meeting about prison reform and Ye hated that. He was so mad on Twitter that he said he was finna divorce his wife over that. And this brings us back to the whole Kanye laughing at Meek thing. The reason he was disrespectful to him was because of all the back and forth the two was doing over the years. So. After Ye did the clubhouse thing where he laughed at Meek, Meek did what he always do. He got on Twitter and had something to say. Meek said, never lost my mind for fame or money. I still got my family. My people respect me. I'm freeing people from prison. I'm doing community service all month with children up close and personal. I'm chilling with my son and his friends today and y'all on clubhouse at 50. But the problems didn't even stop with just him. Even his artist was getting into it. It seemed like this year just ain't it for him. So one of his main artists, Vory, got into something career ruining early this year. Footage came out where he was getting into it with his girl. And this wasn't a little normal argument. This wasn't them just going back and forth. He was snapping on her. He was threatening the He was threatening all kind of stuff toward her. And when this footage came out, Meek dropped him off the label off real. He came out saying, this not a dream chaser. He got a mental problem. We cutting ties with you. We don't care how your music sounds. He been ducking my calls for months telling people I'm threatening him. Stopped a lot of people do. He is not a dream chaser. I'm disconnected from all these wild ass niggas while it's lit out here. Life kind of serious. Hold your folks tight. Every time somebody in the A rob him, he got to call me and I politely call people I rock with to assist him while he biting my back. I'd rather disconnect from people like that. Y'all out here manipulating everybody. In this situation, I had the internet feeling crazy because not only was it a crazy situation to be in, but this was one of Meek Mill artists on top of everything else he was facing this year. Problem still ain't stopped. I'm telling you, Meek was on the road this year. He went to war with another rap legend. He went from Kanye West to 50 Cent. Sometime this year, these two ended up getting into it. But why? What did Meek Mill do to make that nigga that mad? So ever since the Diddy allegations came out, y'all know what 50 do. He gonna troll. And he trolled. And it was getting to Meek Mill. Meek got on Twitter 
He said this. Meek said, my last project sold 90K first week. Expensive pain. Ross did that for his last CD for fun. Let me out my contract because we rich and we got some type of history. It's different, LOL. I don't even know how Cuban was talking to you. Your swag is whack. He said, I never seen black people laugh at black people getting indicted. He really be online enhancing people cases and he got real statements against niggas. You ain't even feed Mike Knox yet. Everybody on to you, but let me stop. These the niggas y'all look up to. These the people that destroy black families and succeed like bad cops. I don't find him funny. I see him as a rich parasite. Y'all be rooting for other people to go to jail and claiming he from the streets. I'm gonna start bombing on y'all. And 50 Cent replied and said, now why would you say some shit like this when you know the feds investigating? Is you stupid or is you dumb? Meek responded, because you federal. The street and queens know why you trying to pick on a little boy. Your own son hates your guts, LOL. I'm so grateful to be on the island with my son and his friends on his B-Day. Don't follow these guys. They miserable lives be terrible. I say what I want because a war come behind me if that's the case, but y'all got that rap shit too loose. Somebody gonna die and y'all gonna be calling y'all federal friends just because y'all not hot no more. Tearing y'all folks down because that's all y'all can do. But what did 50 had to say? After Meek said all of this and announced he was on vacation and all of that, 50 got on Twitter and said this, You sold 6k copies your last project. You should not be on vacation. Still chasing the dream or embracing the nightmare. Standing by your man, I respect it. But that wasn't all 50 had to say. He sent out another tweet. He said, I commend you for being a strong supportive woman for your man, Meek. Stay by his side and stay together. You guys have a good life. God bless. And guess what this nigga posted? He posted a clip of Meek Mill. At a Diddy party. And when Meek started talking about smashing a girl, you see how fast Diddy turned around. Diddy looked at this nigga like, what you on here talking about? But did Meek really sell 6K like 50 said? Sadly, he did. Meek Mill really did sell 6K copies in 2024. Granted, it was on the EP, but that still don't mean too much. Because if you remember back before Uzi had dropped Pink Tech, he dropped the EP called Pink Plus White. And that sold about 25K. And that was a little EP. But there was a caveat to that. When Uzi dropped this EP, it wasn't on stream. The EP was only on streaming for like three days out of the whole seven day week. And for me to sell 6K with a full seven day cycle, it's kind of odd but you got to give it to him it is an ep but back to me i get that he do want to defend himself from all the allegations and everything everybody's saying to him but in reality he is proving drake's point from 2015. drake said almost 10 years ago that meek mill got twitter fingers and meek really do got twitter fingers anytime anything happened meek always get on twitter speaking on it anything that ever happens in his life he always gonna go on twitter and just hurt his reputation because he want to speak on some meek mill reputation in the dirt because of all the twitter talking and beefing he do it's like anytime meek mill step out or do anything he gets clown he remixed family matters by drake at one point and people was just laughing at him but the story keeps going no, academics and me just couldn't stop getting into it earlier this year at got into a weird situation that i'm not gonna go too much in but basically he was getting accused of r and meek spoke on it he replied to a post talking about the situation my mixtapes made a post speaking on the academic situation it said academic says he's innocent after he got sued for r and defamation and meek responded and said whatever these niggas sold they sold to i'm not in it what the now he telling why he was reporting bad about people and what academic seen this he responded telling why he was reporting bad about people meek i will say this to you your face in your on your deathbed i killed your career what was left of it not because of no paid me you disrespected me nine years ago and i kept it and i'm like an elephant i will never forget please don't try to bring up anything else i laugh and i i i, I meek i will never in my life make sure you if i see you at the top of the charts trust me i'm having a bad day i i i i laugh i i have a good time i have my feet kicked up i jack off to the fact that your career is six feet under because you disrespected a who was born in spanish town jamaica who happened to now have hip-hop in the palm of his hands what these other got to say about me i'm still gonna be there. your career ain't coming back i killed it Drake killed it, the game killed it, Rick Ross killed it, even though you cool with him now, they all killed it. But I issued the last and final blow. You could tweet about me all you want to tweet, my nigga, but trust me, your counterparts call me every day and said, act, you a bad mother. You killed that career. I did it because you disrespected me. The next time you see somebody you call a nerd, the next time you see somebody who you, you feel is lesser than you, all that street shit don't matter.
Boy, all that shooting and all that to you didn't it? Boy, you ain't talking about any car you get, I could get. Any house you got, I could get. I got the same money. What you talking about? I just did this to show a like you. You should have respect. The, the reason why a little baby's going through hell, I'm going to teach you. You better have some fucking respect. The person, let me tell you this, it's in the Bible. The stone the builder refuses becomes the head cornerstone. The reason why your career is at where it's at, I'm going to keep laughing at it. I don't care what you tweet out for the rest of your life. Remember, you said you had that had more had more followers than me. And I'm sitting here laughing at your demise. I took a million dollars out of your label's budget. You not talking about you ain't never take a million dollars out of my pocket. And what's crazy is, even though Meek does get a lot of hate and people don't look at him the same, people can still admit over the years that he did have hit songs. He did do a lot for hip hop and the music space in general. And I'm saying all this because not too long ago. Prince has great songs too, but he's not parading around as a gangbanger. Only to find out he's getting bent over washing machines and whatnot. At the end of August, someone was on the podcast and spoke on me. And she was basically on some DDG Bruce shit. She was like, I can't even name five Meek Mill songs if he put a gun to the back of my head. I think Meek, outside of Dreams and Nightmares, I, I don't know anyone who could name five Meek records. Meek, you're, you're I agree. Terrible for that. Meek, I don't, I don't Boy, care. Wait, you're terrible for this. You, Gundy, that's Gundy not a good take. That's fine. Name five. I, I'm a Meek fan. Oh, okay. It, Name Amen, flexing, Maybach curtains, uh, oodles and noodles. Um, we do. So here's the thing. Which is weird. He's a legend. Me, me, no, no, no. Oh, oh God. Um, <laughs> Mandy, yes, he is. So the problem is. Yeah, what's the And issue? this is probably me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jay Z came out and said he was the next Jay Z. Oh, okay. Meek Mill having that title on him, that label on him, and him being like. But you I, believe that when Hope said no, it? I, Hope said no, he was like, ah. Hope, Hope said, no, <laughs> Hope said that. Okay. And what's crazy about her saying this is that it sparked up a whole debate on Twitter. People on Twitter was really defending me. One reply to the post with 48K views and 2K likes said this. Dog, y'all gotta stop interviewing Mandy B at this point. If you was in college or the streets from 07 to 2015, Meek was everywhere. Meek got four RIAA certified albums and 40 songs either gold or platinum. This is ridiculous. Another comment said, raise the price on podcast equipment. And that's not a crazy thing to say because a lot of people do be on these podcasts chatting a whole bunch of nothing. And what's crazy is, Mick responded to the damn post. He could have just let it fry. He could have just let the people on Twitter defend him, and he could have went on about his day, but he replied. He said, how many hits on this mixtape do you know? Not Billboard classified hits. I got those too, but this 2011 vibes, I'm kind of rap invincible. The Mandela effect is real, huh? See, even though Meek does get the hate and the disrespect that he does, people can admit what he done did for the culture and what he done did just for music in general. I just feel like Meek, a person who can't really handle social media, a lot of careers would be better if they didn't respond to the hate or get online speaking on problems that they didn't really have no business speaking on. Prime example, what's going on right now with the whole what's the dirt thing? This nigga speaking on black culture when he could have just kept his mouth out of it. And that turned into him getting a lot of hate. I guarantee you, if Meek wasn't out here on Twitter every single day tweeting about BS, people would have a lot more respect for him. Remember what I said? He basically proved Drake's point, and people never forgot that. And a prime example of people not forgetting this is when somebody on Twitter said this. When trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers is the true definition of Meek Mill. And for whatever reason, Meek Mill responded to this random person's tweet with a video of guess what? Him in the gun range, shooting some guns. He said, I started off with triggers, but if you're not in the tech nowadays, you'll be behind on life. I like computers better than guns. I play with them guns better than the computer, though. I just choose not to only for defense. Now, me, why would you respond to this? Why would you respond to this random ass person on Twitter with this corny response? And it's just stuff like this that causes people not to respect me. Meek would be held to a higher standard if he didn't do all the talking that he do. And the people in the replies was even questioning Meek like, why did he do this? And I hope Meek can turn his career around because I feel like right now, if he was to drop a solid body of work, if he was to drop a, a really good album, people would not want to listen to it because of everything he done did over the past few years. Public perception is everything when it comes to music space. But Meek Mill public perception is in the dirt because he can't stop tweeting. But how do y'all feel about Meek Mill? Do he need a break off? First of all, you're wrong for that. Yes, I'm not gonna buy the next Meek Mill album, but you're wrong for making me think he was gonna say something inspirational and then you say what I was thinking, or what we all was thinking, and we ain't gonna buy the mixtape. I'm not, I'm not touching. Well, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Twist.